Yeah. With the Sunday footy show, it was a magnificent game of football, one worthy of a final last night between North Melbourne and Port Adelaide. A change of lead regularly during the game. Port Adelaide in the end had a little bit too much in the tank by eight points with Schultz kicking four national Nathan Brown. It was a super game, Hutchie. One of the best games we've seen in the last two years of football. Um, and Port Adelaide just got over the line at the end. Lindsay Thomas kicked four. Joe Schultz was pretty good also. Hartlett was good. Andrew Swallow. Jacobs came in as the sub but had 30 disposals. Gibson was very, very good early um, and Boak was okay too. But it uh, gives me pleasure to welcome a man who's First year at the Kangaroos, but he's been a super pick-up so far. Kicked seven goals in three games. Sean Higgins, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks, Brad. Um, last couple of dying minutes. I mean, you probably thought you had it. Lindsay Thomas put you in front. You had the game there, four minutes to defend it. You just couldn't get it done. Yeah, I don't think you, you think that you've got it, but definitely when you get yourself in that situation with a few minutes to go, uh, you'd expect that you can hold on. And um, I think you've already been through a couple of clips where... We let ourselves down and to do so much right for so long, uh, a couple of things like that's really disappointing. Is Brad Scott happy enough with where you are at the moment? I mean, taking out round one, you were terrific last week, you smashed the Brisbane Lions. But Port Adelaide are as good as it gets. I know they've lost their first two games, but what was his message after the game when, when you go down by four points in a game that you could have been two and one? Yeah, we weren't happy post-game. Um, the message was similar to what you've already covered and, and I just mentioned um, to do. So much right, and, and after round one, you know that's the pleasing side of it. But the disappointing thing was, um, like we said, getting in a position to win a game of fo footy, and uh, yeah, a couple of goals late, really costly. Here you go. Tell us about moving clubs. A lot of people out there might think it's just easy for a 26, 27 year old to pack up and, and move clubs, but it's tough, isn't it? You, you've been in one locker room for, for eight or so years, and all of a sudden you, you, you got your bags and you walk into another one. How'd you, how'd you go about that? Yeah, it was, um, well, no doubt, you know, the toughest call of my footy career mm. so far. But I felt like, from a football side of, of things, that it's what I needed to do. Mm. And I haven't looked back once and still, um, you know, I'm, I'm loving my time there and, and think it was the best call I could have made. But, um, yeah, the first couple of months, it's, uh, it's unusual to be nine, nine years at a, mm. at a place that feels like home, it's your family, and then to, to go into a different environment. And guys have been together for five, ten years. Uh, it was challenging, but at the same time, it... It almost gave me a new lease on life of, of footy and a really good pre-season and, and love training and, and now playing. Why did you want to go, Sean, in the end? What was the thinking? Uh, I, I just felt, like I said, footy-wise, footy, footy -wise, I, I needed a change. And, uh, you know, that's nothing against what was happening at the Dogs. And I love my time there and love the guys there. But um, I needed a change. And, and like I said, I still think that was the right call. And Colin was all right, too. <laughs> hey, and your, body's, your body let you down over you know, consistently at the Western Bulldogs. Was it something that you've worked out since then to help that or was just unlucky throughout your time at the Western Bulldogs? Yeah, a little bit of both. Mm. I think, Lloydie, sometimes there's, there's luck involved. And if the injuries I had were, was, were injuries that I couldn't do anything about. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, you learn along the way. And uh, I think now I do everything I need to do to get my body in a position to, to play well. Having said that, pre-season helps and pre-season that I've come off um, has put me in a really good stead and a great opportunity to, to have a consistent year. We'll have a look at the highlights uh, as they come up on the screen now, but uh, playing at the Kangaroos at the moment, at the very end-to-end -end stuff, it's, it's a high-intensity game. Is it similar to the way you played under Rodney Eade when you played in those three preliminary finals? Because it is a very attacking game style. It actually feels um, very similar, Brownie, to that. But, um, you know, footy's changed a lot. The, the attack on the footy's increased, the defensive side of the game's increased, but um, definitely the, the way that we're able to move the footy and Port last night showed that they loved doing that as well. It was a, it was a high-paced game, but um, yeah, I think that suits me pretty well. Looks like Scotty settled on the fact that you're a, a forward, mate. You, you're enjoying being back across half-forward. We know that you spent a fair bit of time across half-back last year, but you enjoy being ahead of the ball and, and able to use your skills and hit the scoreboard. Yeah, I'm loving the role that I'm playing at the moment. Um, it helps to have a, like I said, a good pre-season to be able to, to, it's a high work rate sort of role. But um, yeah, I'm enjoying that. I'm, I mean, I'm happy to play anywhere, but at the moment I think that's where I can add most value. Tell us about big Brent Brown, because he, he's important. He moves around. Like you, you look at him, you think he wouldn't move that much, but his work rate and his ability to get up outside 50 and then back in, kick three goals last night, he is going to be one hell of a player. Yeah, he is. his work rate's fantastic. He kicks the ball really well. I think the impressive thing from a, a key forward and what you want, we saw a couple of clips there, is he just gives a contest and sometimes when he's out of position he's able to bring the, the ball to ground and, and give opportunity to the smaller guys to run onto it. 
Uh, his last two games have been great, so it's um, it's working pretty well up there. So you're home here, Lindsay kicks a goal, and then just a couple of little defensive errors. Shauna, after this, you're home here. Yeah, it was. I'm not sure what the, the clock says there, but, you know, five, six minutes to go, uh, we're up, and, you know, clips like this is what we're going to have to go through during the week and talk about, but against the quality side and, and where we want to go this year, that, um, that can't happen. Yeah. Yep. Talk us about through the vice captain's injury, uh, bruised lung we're hearing, Jack Siebel, have you heard from him and, and what's the diagnosis for him? Oh. Yeah, as far as I know, it's exactly what you said, yeah. Lloyd, I think they're still waiting to have a look at more scans today, um, our medical team yeah. are, so uh, we wish Jack all the best, He, um, I texted him last night, he, he seemed in pretty good spirits, so... Won't play for... Is it out? Is there any chance, or with that you won't play for? I've got, I've got no idea. Okay. I couldn't tell you what that, that injury. On top of Wells, though, who yeah, just yeah, and Del well. Santo. So, so with, was Wells a chance to play next game, or? or yeah, I think he was. Well, he tried during the week, yeah. and as far as I knew, he was he was playing. So he'll be, I would imagine, extremely close to play this. Got to change his game, nearly Zeebs, doesn't he? Yeah, you keep so uh, yeah, uh, you keep hearing that, but you, do. you look at something like that, and it's just. It's just one of those things. But he didn't have... 98% of players wouldn't have gone that hard to that contest because it was a mark, so you just stand on the mark. Yeah, but I think that's what makes Jack yeah. Jack. He's not going to um, change his game, do He's not going to pull but up But he, he got knocked out like in the NAB mm. challenge. He's been knocked or injured again. They're going to have to do something for him to get him time on the ground. Oh. Hey, Chad Whitgard, did you see this last night? He used the point post as a slingshot. This is clever, this, because he was out of the play there, quickly goes in. That is fantastic. And not... and, oh, 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 come on, Gus. You've got to kick <laughs> that. Goal, no, no but, but, but it's, it's very uh, clever to do that, to just get back in the play. And then uh, Gus, he probably should have finished it off. National U votes. Yes, the votes. There was a lot of good players last night as they come up on the screen. I can't remember. Pittard, he was fantastic. <laughs> his work off half back. That is the best game I've seen him play. Ebert was terrific in his 150th. Kicked three goals, had 20 odd. I thought Luke McDonald's yep. rebound off half back was fantastic. And Jacobs came on as a sub very early for Zebel. We'll finished with 30 disposals um, and played a very good game also. Mm. Sean, sure, well done, mate. Thanks for coming in. Oh, unfortunately, a bit of loss, but all well done on fronting up today. And best of luck for the weeks to come. Cheers, guys.